How do I go from this to this? Stay tuned to find out. I'm starting with a stretched canvas that I've coated with gesso and I'm going to cover it with Payne's Gray. This is a Nova Color paint and um, it's actually kind of blue but when you use it um, full strength it looks pretty dark almost black. I like to start with a toned canvas because it's just a great way to jumpstart a painting, especially when you start with a dark color. It makes you think a little differently. So I don't have footage of my first layer. I'm not sure why, but the first layer was silver done with this scraping tool, which is a um, screen printing squeegee. I have a video about scrape painting, if you're interested, where I demonstrate lots of different tools. And so this one, I just wanted a really big mark. Ended up covering a lot of it up with this red. So I actually really loved it at this stage. It's just really bold. Um, and I think I'd like to experiment with this idea later in some other canvases. But here I took a, a fat, paint marker, silver paint marker that I've had around for a while and just did a drawing on top of the red. And I let each thing dry so the, the red is completely dry. And I decided to take it outside and hit it with some spray paint. And this is white spray paint and I'm letting it drip. So it was feeling kind of grungy and gritty uh, with these real high contrast colors um, at this stage anyway. It, it definitely evolves into a lot of different um, things. But I really like the spray paint look so I don't know why I went ahead and covered it up, but here I was using some kind of yucky old paint um, and did a transparent layer and just covered the whole thing. I think I thought the white was a little um, jumping out a little too much. So in these recent paintings I've been sharing, they are very experimental. I definitely do not have a plan when I start. And I'm playing around with these, you know, bolder choices and also um, these layers. So here I'm bringing back the dark, you know, so I'm, I, I push everything down so it's sort of flat and then I'm going to bring a previous layer to the forefront again. So now I added a similar pattern to the one I drew with the silver on top of what I have going here now. This is the light turquoise, so it has white mixed in it. And the other colors so far, the black and the red, um, don't have any white mixed in. So this color kind of um, floats on top. And I've also really loved this color combination in the past. So I, I thought, let me see what a pattern in this does. What I don't like right here is where the red is on the white spray paint and it feels a little pink. Um, I think maybe it would have been more interesting 
had it just been red with this turquoise with black. Um, so sometimes your layers uh, create things that you're not excited about. Other times you get some really interesting things by using transparent layers. Okay, here I'm using a black paint stick. So this is oil-based paint stick. Um, and I don't know that you're necessarily supposed to use this alongside acrylic paint if then you're layering with acrylic paint because it does take a little while for a paint stick paint to dry. But I do love the mixture of different marks. So drawing with this paint stick has almost like a crayon feeling and look to it. And it contrasts with the brushwork and with the scrape painting and the spray paint. So here I'm talking blah, blah, blah about things that I like in the painting and where what I think I should do next. So I went in close here so you can see all those different marks. If I feel like it's just not settled, I just, I have to do something. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of mono printing and we'll see what happens. So this is yet another mark and I've used this quite a bit in my paintings. So I have other videos where I show this technique and I also have separate videos that you can watch about this technique. Um, so I'm just using artist palette paper as my printing plate so I can flip it over and transfer this um, onto my painting. So what I'm doing is painting a layer of white paint and then removing paint with that thing that's called a color shaper. It's like a rubber spatula, taking paint off and then transferring it onto the painting.
the thing I don't like about watching back my own video is that I can't tell myself, oh, you should have stopped. Um, so I keep going with this mono printing, but I'm using a technique where I'm just painting a shape. So I'm not getting a square transfer. I'm able to control the shape itself um, that then I draw into and I'm controlling where I put it down. Um, so it's a lot of fun, but watching it back, I think I should have stopped uh, a little bit before I did <laughs> in this process because I kind of like it right here. I don't know. Um, so we'll see what you think. So now I have my paintbrush out again, and I'm gonna bring that turquoise layer out to the foreground again. But once again, while I'm watching this footage, I wish I would have just taken it easy, maybe slowed down a little bit and really sat with it. So now I went back to the oil paint stick and did some more drawing to bring out some of the black. And this is looking kind of cool. And what I'm always trying for is what's considered or what's called push-pull. So there's some areas that are going to come forward and some that are going to go back. I like, to uh, I like a painting to have a lot of depth and complexity. Um, so once again, I'm, I'm sort of liking this, but I never know when to stop. I need to maybe, I mean, I know I need to work on more than one canvas at a time so I don't go overboard on one. So here now I have a large sponge brush and I'm bringing black paint back into the foreground in an attempt to quiet it down a bit to eliminate some of the shapes and hopefully combat some of what I felt was busyness. more turquoise, first with the brush and then with my color shaper. With the color shaper, I wanted to kind of counteract too many of those um, droplet shapes. So I was doing a, a different mark. So in using the color shaper in this manner, I'm imposing a little bit of destruction 
uh, in disruption to where I have outlined these teardrop shapes too perfectly. This is a technique I do on my phone. I send a message to myself. Where, where am I? Take a picture, get the painting squared up in the frame, which is the hardest part. And that gives you, there's some glare on here, this markup. I just chose this marker here. I'm just gonna play with black So this is a way to test some ideas and I just scribble with my finger with this little app and then I save it and it's in my text messages to myself. So I can do a couple different variations and in the text, text message can compare them to each other or save them to my photos. But if I send them both to myself in a text message, you'll see they'll be next to each other. So this is where I left it, and this could have been a finished painting, but I ended up moving my studio, and every time I looked at this, I didn't love it. And I really think it was the colors, and like I said earlier, I had used some old crappy paint, which didn't have a real vibrant color. It just felt dull to me. It looked dull. So. Um, check in on my next video to see what I end up doing with this. I think you're going to be very surprised. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and hit the bell for notifications. Thanks so much.